So what about biomechanics? So anytime there's an injury, we have to evaluate the mechanism. And biomechanics is really the study of laws relating to movement, of stru movement or structure of a, of a living organism. There are different ways we can do it. You can do mathematical modeling with finite element analysis. You can do cadaver studies, human volunteers, or, or crash dummies. So if you look at the spine, the, the thoracic spine from T1 to T8 really is a very stiff, rigid structure, and, and it usually just fails in flexion. Um, the, the mobile um, lumbar spine where it connects to the rigid thoracic spine, there's a transition zone at that, at that junction between T9 and L2 where you transition from stiff to mobile, and most injuries actually occur at that zone because of that transition. Whereas in the lumbar spine where there's more mobility and a lordosis here, most injuries are due to an axial load. So we can do biomechanical testing of cadaver specimens. We put them in these fancy uh, testing machines and devices to measure load and displacement. Um, there's actually a study where they took a human volunteer, a 45-year-old man, weighed 70 kilograms. They put a transducer, pressure transducer in his back and measured him for 24 hours, you know, all the activities of daily living. And what they found that when he lifted a 20 kilogram weight with it bending forward with his knees straight, there was a four and a half fold increase in intradiscal pressure. They also found, interestingly, that the pressure increased in the disc 240% after he'd been in bed for seven hours lying flat. So why is that? Well, presumably there's rehydration of the disc, but I found that pretty interesting that after you go to bed, lying there for six, seven hours, the pressure in your disc actually increases. So biomechanical studies can be done with crash dummies. Um, you know, there's a lot of information you can get from analyzing victims of car accidents um, and these high-speed deceleration injuries. And here are just some amazing numbers. A vertebral compress body compression fracture, 20, 30 Gs, fracture dislocation, 20 to 40, aortic transection, 80 to 100, pelvic fractures, 100 to 200 Gs, body fragmentation, so your body will fragment at 350 Gs. Now this is where, I actually looked this up, I was a physics major. The human body is more resistant to disruption than an aircraft. So when they test aircraft wings, they flex them and cycle them to, to failure. Your body is more resistant to failure than an aircraft wing. So good luck on your next flight. <laughs>